Hello, and welcome back to the Small Loft Workshop. My outdoor workbench series has been received really well, and I thank you for your likes, comments and views. I did, however, receive some comments from viewers who had such little storage they could not keep a bench like this. These comments got me thinking, how could I make a bench that didn't really need much storage space? One solution was to keep it outside when not in use. But then again, who wants a workbench in their garden? But if the workbench wasn't a workbench when it wasn't in use and it was some garden seating, for example, then maybe I could pull this project off and turn the garden seats into a workbench. So here is what I've come up with. This is a concept build, version 1.0 if you like. This project turned out to be a little bit of a roller coaster, and at times it really blew my mind. So, let me talk you through the story of this project. I started off with a few lengths of 2x3. Some was already planed, and some I bought to keep costs down as roofs on timber. I cut them down outside and then transferred them into the loft so I could pass them through my Triton planer. Initially, I needed enough stock to make four legs and four feet, as well as the two seat parts. And once my stock was planed, I marked out the four legs to have a tenon on one end and the four feet to have a mortise in the centre. To ensure that the feet didn't rock and stayed flat on the ground, I removed a third of the bottom face with my router cutter keeping the pieces in a longer length to make sure it was safer to carry out the operation. The new sliding table I made last week came in really handy to cut the four tenons, one at the end of each leg. And now the routering of the feet was over, I could cut them to the final length. Mark the mortise pockets in the centre. Put a 12mm drill bit in the pillar drill. Fasten the pillar drill to the bench and use some packing to make sure the stock was in the right position. And then drill out the mortise pockets as best I could. Annoyingly, I didn't catch this part on my main camera, but caught it in portrait mode for an Instagram reel I made. And once I'd finished drilling the mortise pocket, it was just a matter of cleaning up the pocket with my mortise chisel and making sure the mortise and tenon fit really well. I used my square to make sure the foot was square to the leg and used my trusty tenon saw to make sure the shoulder was really tight. Finally just marking the leg sets up so I knew which foot went with which leg. I wanted to add some detail to the top of the foot so I marked on a slope, fastened it down on my taper jig, screwed some scrap pieces to the foot so I could make a repeatable cuts and then ran them through the blade. Moving on to the seat slash bench top I cut six plain pieces of timber to length and as I was going to glue all these together sorted them to ensure I had the best joints. Note the middle piece is shorter than the two out ones, in fact it is shorter by two times the thickness of the legs. To join all these together I thought I would also insert six dominoes using my new machine. I am starting to love this new machine although it's still an extravagant buy. It's a great tool to use, but I'm still trying to figure out whether it is worth the money. And once all the dominoes was cut, I glued and clamped the seat tops together with some exterior grade glue. And once the glue had set, I ran the two seat parts through the planer to smooth off the joints. Notice I'm running a piece of scrap through the planer before and after the seats to reduce snipe. 
and then just to make sure the ends were square, cut them flush with my track saw. Next I needed to make four nosings, one for each end of the seat slash workbench top. So I ripped down a piece of timber and passed it through the planer to make sure it was the same thickness as the seats. Cut these four pieces of timber, their approximate length of the width of the seat, round about 9 inches. And to fix them to the end of the seats, inserted two 8mm dominoes. Using the dominoes own inbuilt stop to space out the cuts. And the noses were glued and clamped on overnight using the same exterior glue. Once the nosings were dry, the edges of the seats were just cleaned off with my track saw. I wanted to maximise the clamping opportunities of these seat stroke benches. So, using the T-slot cutter I bought to make my jigs with, I routed a stop groove in each face of the four legs. Because the seats were going to be reversible, with a flat face up in the seat position and a groove face up in the bench position, I inserted two grooves in one face and one groove in each of the long edges. For the seat tops I followed each cut with a scrap piece of wood to stop tear out as the cutter came out of the back of the groove. In hindsight I put too many of these grooves into the legs and as you will see later it caused a problem. Even though this T-slot lets me cut the groove in one go, it does clog up the groove and it takes a lot of cleaning out after the cut. Once the grooving was done, I swapped the cutter for my large chamfer bit and then ran a chamfer around all the seats, all the legs and the feet. And finally, before I could glue up the legs, I took out my bobbin sander and sanded up the indentation in the base of the feet and then swapped to my belt sander and cleaned up the top of the feet. The chamfer was continued around the base of the leg with my block plane. To glue the mortise and tenon together, I decided to insert some wedges, so I made a couple of kerf cuts with my bandsaw and then using a piece of same thickness timber made a stack of wedges. Apply glue to the joint and to the wedge and then drove the wedges home to tighten up the joint. Finally making sure the foot and the leg was square before leaving them overnight to cure. To connect a pair of legs together I needed to make a bottom rail that would be mortise and tenon into the base of the legs. So I worked out the thickness I would need the rail and then marked out the mortise pocket I would need to cut in the leg. To make the rail I cut a piece of 2x3 into a piece of 2 by one and a quarter and regularised them through the Triton planer. To cut the four mortise pockets, one at the bottom of each leg, I figured I could cut the mortise pockets with the domino by cutting from each side and then reversing the cuts, so four cuts total per leg. These mortise holes just then needed minimal clearing out with my mortise chisel. Of course I could have cut these fully with the chisel or drilled them out and then just cleaned up the mortise. And now my mortise hole was cut I could mark out the size of my tenon to the hole and using my new crosscut jig cut out the tenon at the table saw 
I used a rasp to round over the corners of the tenon and then using my mallet hammered in the tenon joint which proved to be a really good tight fit. To hold the bottom rail into the legs I decided to cut four further mortise pockets and insert a wedge in each one to make the joints nice and tight. I thought using the wedge method I could take the old frame apart should I wish to. With a little bit of trial and error I've worked out I could cut these 8mm mortises with the domino by packing up the base of the domino with some sandpaper to the correct height. These of course could have easily been cut by hand. In fact I needed to elongate the holes and clean them up with the chisel anyway. To create the wedges I cut some scrap timber down to 8mm thick and then cut the wedges out on the bandsaw. And then the wedges were tapped in with the mallet until the joints were tight. Now I had the base of the seat together I could slide over one of the seat tops and using a couple of packers set it to the correct height. To pin the seat in place and the bench top in place I decided to use some 8mm bolts set in 9mm holes. And with the seat at the correct height I marked out the centres and drilled the 9mm holes as deep as I could and inserted the bolts. And once I drilled the first pair and inserted the bolts, I could then remove the packers and try the seat. These are set at a comfortable 18 inch height. The other seat was fixed in the same manner. And now I have a pair of seats and the ends to the workbench. To create the workbench height, I used the same method of packers set at 900 millimeters high, set my bench top with the grooves facing up and drilled through the pre-drilled holes that I'd earlier made, pinning the joints again with the 8mm bolts. And to finish this part of the build cut the legs to length. Now it is time to turn my attention to the two cross rails that will form the bench top when it is in the bench position. I decided to make the overall bench length 1200mm or just under 4 feet. Studying the timber I had left I figured out that the best dimensions were inch and a half thick by 3 inch deep. So I took my stock to the table saw, cut it down and then regularised it through the Triton planer. I next needed to mark out the bearers to cut them round the top of the workbench top. And as I needed to cut 9 inch out of each end, I first made the plumb cut with my tenon saw and then cut the rest of the material out over at the table saw. With a final clean up with my tenon saw and chisel. Taking the bearers over to the bench ends, I clamped them in place and then realised I needed to remove a little bit more stock where the legs passed the bearers. This project was now getting quite difficult to get round in my small workshop. So the notches were marked out and then I took them back to the bench and cut them out with the saw and the hammer and chisel. And once complete they look like this. And when I return the bearers back to the table and clamp them in place, they now sat perfectly flush with the ends of the seats. To attach the bearers to the legs, I've used some more 8mm bolts with a 9mm hole. I've bought some plastic star knobs to tighten the bolts, but at the time of filming and editing, they're still in the post, so for now I'm using wing nuts. I said earlier I had a little bit of issue with the grooves I'd put in the legs for the clamps and that is with the top on I can't actually engage the clamp into the groove so I've cut out a small pocket so I can engage the clamp. The two bearers that form the front and back of the top also have the same groove to accept my rail clamps. This will form a vise on the face 
but this will also need a small pocket for the clamp to drop into and instead of cutting them by hand I figured if I lowered the cutter I could do it at the router table and I also figured if I mark the width of the clamp on the piece I could set my fence as a stop guide to how far I needed to route her into the bearer. I tried this on a piece of scrap first resulting in a much neater finish. And the last few things to do before this leaves the loft is to give everything a good sanding. Once outside the workshop I can now build it back together. First of all I fit the brace into the legs and then insert the wedges. Slide the seat down over the legs. Repeat the process with the other pair of legs. Lift the seat to the seating height and insert the bolts. And sit down and have a much needed cup of tea. To this point I've spent about 20 hours making this. The process has been edited and presented to you in around 16 minutes. Right, let's make these seats into a bench. Lift the top off and rotate it round with grooves facing upwards. Reinsert the bolts. Space the two ends around about 4 feet apart. And bolt on the two side bearers. I have actually made a mark on each end of these so I know which way round the bearers go. For the top I'm using a piece of 18mm MDF which needs to be cut down to just over 600mm and then cut to length to just over 700mm. And now I have the frame of the bench, I can utilise it to help me cut this top to size. The top, for now, will be supported by two pieces of inch by two. And I clamp these to the inside of the bearers and pack them up with a piece of offcut to try and get them somewhere near before I can fit the top and then dial in the exact level. And here is pretty much where I'm going to leave this video. I've got some more ideas of how to use this top and this will come to you in another video. But for now, let me know what you think about this build. As I said right at the start, it's a concept design and it's certainly not perfect but I'm really keen to know what you guys think and I'm also keen to know how you think I should improve the design. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to catch more videos and may I suggest you may like this video.